another traveler. Pull a chair up and rest your feet. Would you care for some food or a drink? Perhaps some information or a legendary tale. Come, stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to Tavern Legends, episode one of our legendary tales today. I'm Clayton Friedemann with Jacob Yambor. And we are looking forward to running you guys through an example quest today that we have um, written ourselves. Um, it is worth mentioning that we do have a special guest today, a Mr. Brett Devon with us. He's one of our players and we're going to give him the mic here to kind of introduce himself. Uh, hey everyone, um... My name's Brett Devin, like Clay, Clay said. Uh, I've been playing with them for about, I don't know, a few years now, off and on. Um, I'm part of the current quest we're doing of Storm of King's Thunder, uh, and they invited me along. I'm pretty new to D&D, um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. All right, perfect. Yeah. We thought Brett would be the perfect example of having somebody who's newer in the game, might have a few questions, so we can answer any questions that pop up as we go along. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a geared towards beginning players. Right. So this is going to be, essentially, if you've looked through the book or gotten the books, there's these little snippets in the books that tell you an example of how the game flow goes and everything. So this is kind of just right. one of those little sessions where we're going to run and we're going to give you some examples of kind of just how to play the game in general today. Yeah, so we'll give some example scenarios on how to use skills and how combat runs, right. that simple stuff. So you're probably asking yourself, why is, what is different than the table talk? Why is this a legendary tales? Well, we are peeling back the manila envelope to say on one of our projects right now. We are going to be running out of our homebrew world. Uh, and before we say anything we would just like to essentially maintain these names and everything if you guys could just not use them or anything we'd appreciate it because we're giving you a little look into the world but yes um this is our own original world that we want to we want to throw to you guys and and get you into it but mm -hmm. um we are running this in our world called ritara ritara is this mythical world where the gods have touched the earth and there are a lot of religious people, but there's magic, some technology, and it's a large, expansive plane of existence, I mm -hmm. guess. We're, we're only going to be focusing on in on one little region today, uh, the Valengard region, um, and that is set in 1422 FD. That's our year system. That's our year system, um, and it's going to be taking place in, in Valengard, like I said, um, in this region that is covered in pines, mountains, yeah. hills. High terrain, rugged land. Uh, it's a bit of a drier, harsh climate, but you can still find some shrubs and trees. Mm -hmm. It sits along the coastline. Well, some of the it sits, some of it sits along the coastline, the cities the, yeah. and stuff. The north part is along the coastline, and then the south part overlooks a great chasm. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially the last remaining... Um, human capital in this world if you want to say this is where most of the humans have come to flee and, and protect their species as a whole um, so we kind of wanted to present this world to you guys and, and see what you guys thought give you a little bit of sneak preview um, we're letting Brett in on it kind of for the first time too here so yep um, this is our first actual quest in Rutara yeah so we're, we're going to do a couple of these probably every now and then, not necessarily all in Ritara. So that's that's why it's a Legendary Tales episode. So Yeah. Um, with that, I guess you want to give a little bit of a rundown of what the what the game's going to be like today? or uh, so Yeah, so today we will be journeying from Greycliff, which is a coastal city set along the eastern edge of Valengard. So with Valengard... Um, there's these valleys that run through the hills, so that's where the veils come from. 
we will be sent forth as a patrol to start scouting out one of these veils and report back any possible hostile, hostile activity. We have been told that there is a presence of hobgoblins and goblinoids of other types, so we have to be wary, and our job is to potentially find any sort of encampment. Right. And we will be playing the roles. I will, I will be playing Dungeon Master today, running NPCs in, in the world itself. Um, Jake's going to be taking on an NPC slash player. Well, not NPC, sorry. It's a character. A player slash DM kind of role. Yeah. Um, he, oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've let him let him know some of the stuff ahead of the time, what we're going to be running in this session. So. Yeah, but um, I will... I will do my part and play as a character without using outside knowledge. No metagame. No metagaming. And then we have our fresh boy in here, Brett Devin. Uh, he's, he's, we've kind of just given him a little rundown of the area, but other than that, he he's going in blind. So with that, is there anything else you guys want to say before we get started in the old session? Um, I think we can introduce our characters. That might be good. Yeah, that's a great idea, yeah. actually. Um, so today... I will be playing the role of Sergeant Felix Kovarik. I'm a no-nonsense kind of guy, and I look to get the job done as fast as possible. I'm in command of these troops here. We have Leia, Harriet, Mac, George, and one that Brett is playing. Yes, my character will be Corporal Victor Hans. He is the second-in-command, basically, under Felix, who is the sergeant of this troop. And I am a dedicated military man... Down to the letter, follow the orders, dedicated to my sergeant, will follow his orders anywhere. Um, That's kind of my character. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else you guys want to say, or are you just ready to dive in? Let's jump into this. All right. So, we went over over Valengard a little bit already, but let's kind of just kind of bring you into the world a little bit. So, you guys are on the, the most closest checkpoint to Greycliff. You're here at, at a scouting camp under uh, Captain Harleaf, Arthur Harleaf's control. Um, you guys are just sitting um, at this at this scouting camp waiting to be giving your next orders right now. You've lived in this region for most of your life. You're very familiar with the territory. You know what comes a lot around with it. Um, so that's where you guys are. You're in, in that post. Um, uh, stalwart Fort Stalwart is the name of it, and Captain Arthur Harleaf is is looking that over. So that's kind of where we're op- where we're gonna open up. You guys will just be sitting around the campfire, um, and suddenly you guys will be approached by Captain Harleaf, who will come up to you guys as you guys are just sitting around drinking, having a few smokes, having a good time with your 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 scouting group. And Harleaf will approach you kind of with a serious look on his face. He won't say anything as he approaches your camp. He just lets you guys kind of talk it over. What would you guys like to do? I immediately snap up to attention. Full salute. Captain! At the ready. And I'll be hanging out with the other privates, kind of leading them and kind of hanging out with them, um, waiting to get my orders from the sergeant. Right, so you get, you say that, and he says, At ease, at ease, men. <laughs> I bring some information today, a possible task for you, if you will. Can you can you lend me your ears for a bit? Yes, sir. You mind if I have a seat next to the fire with you? By all means. Oh, I see you're enjoying some food. Do you mind if I, I nibble on some of that? Please. Ah, thank you. Well, gentlemen, you're probably asking yourselves why I'm here in the middle of the night, ruining your great night, but... I do have a mission of great importance I must give to you. There have been hobgoblin attacks on the nearby village, the fishing village, just on the coastline. I'm sure you're very familiar with it. I don't know if any of you had family or there or anything like that, but they suffered great casualties and the city was burned to the ground. We don't know where this hobgoblin threat came from, We know it came from the Goblinoid Empires further to the west, but where they're hiding this army now, we have no idea where. You're our best scouting party, and you have been for some time. I need you guys to go out over into the the hills, and I need you guys to search for this Hobgoblin party 
There's been some sightings of possible hobgoblins in that area. We just can't seem to locate their location. What say you? Absolutely, sir. Which direction do we need to go? Just follow the path southwest from here. That should take you pretty close to those hills. From there, you should be able to hopefully find some tracks or some sort of local villagers or traders maybe along the line that can point you in their direction. But I know you guys know these hills like the back of your hand, so that's why I sent you here. And you especially, Felix. You're very familiar with this territory. This is your area. These are your enemies. Yes, sir, Captain Harleaf. I won't let you down. Thank you very much. Corporal, will you have these men's acting in great order, these privates under you? And will you listen to the sergeant's orders in mine? I will follow the sergeant's actions and orders to the fullest of my ability, and my men will follow mine as well. Well then, it's done. I suggest you enjoy the rest of your night, gentlemen, because in the morning, you'll set out on this on this scouting mission for me. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, sir. Captain Harleaf will walk away, um, and you guys will continue through the night, um, essentially partying it up, having a good time. Um, not the sergeant. He goes the, to his tent, he starts taking notes and start plotting the course. Right away, right on. Um, anything you would like to do, Corporal, with, in your time with remaining with the rest of the night and with the privates? I'd just like to keep them in high spirits and keep yeah. them jovial so that they're in a good mood for the, the mission right. the next day. So you guys you guys drink for a little bit more and everything, but the mood as soon as Harleaf gets out of sight kind of down declines into a more somber, more serious note as you guys let it settle in that you're going to be going on this mission searching for a hobgoblin army. Um, you guys fall asleep. It takes you a little bit of time to get to sleep with the anticipation of the upcoming mission on, on your thoughts, but you wake up in the next morning refreshed and eager to hit the road. What would you guys like to do? Bright and early. Sergeant Felix is just going to get up and start smacking the frying pan. Ting, ting, let's go, men! Get ready! Privates, get up, get up! Your, your, corp, your sergeant's waking you up. <laughs> get up! All right, everyone snaps to attention and is ready at your command. Gather your gear. Prepare to set out. Aye, right, Captain. Or, er, Sergeant. I got my bag. Is it get Captain my halberd. Or sergeant? What is it, Corporal? <laughs> got my halberd with my banner hanging off of it, the symbol of Falator. Right. Our great god. And I will... Let's go, men! And just lead them on. We'll head right. out southwest. You guys pack up your gear, enough trail rations to last you through the next remaining days. Um, it's probably about a day's travel southwest till you guys start getting to some of that uh, hillier area um, nothing nothing really stands out to you at first it just seems like a pretty pretty normal first day of travel and you guys set up camp you get rested again before you set off the next morning um, in a very similar fashion to you did the previous night um, the areas are starting to get more hilly like I described the hills here kind of start at a low um, hump and just progressively work their way up to a central larger hump that kind of sits at the top of this this hill um, so you guys have essentially this whole little area to come wherever you guys want to start um, that's up to you guys uh, I think our best course of action will be I guess I'll, I'll go up to uh, my corporal and be like Victor my plan is to go to that hill I think that's our best course of action but I want to check with you Feel confident? Feel Does it conf point to that tallest hill? I feel confident, and if there's nothing up there, at least we'll have a higher vantage point to maybe get some view on maybe possible next places to go. That's my man. So we'll set out for the hill. All right. Um, can I have the marching order for you guys as you head out? I will take point. Um, I'll have Mac and Leia take second, and then okay. Harriet and George after, and I'm going to leave Victor as my rear guard. All right, sounds good to me. I want you to do a one, two, two, one. All right, so you guys start marching in these hills. Um, it's not long before you kind of get a, almost a little lost in them, but due to Jake's um, expert navigation abilities, I'm going to have him roll a survival check to 
essentially lead you guys through this area. All right. So thanks to my favorite terrain, I'll roll with advantage with my two d20s. Taking my better result, and I got and crit right, go, off, right the off the start. start. That's my Natural dice. 20. All right, perfect. So you fearlessly lead these men no problem through this land. As you guys point the hills out perfectly, you know all the shortcuts and these hills, all the perfect um, little secrets to get through here without wasting too much stamina. Nothing's going to slow you down, essentially, in this aspect. As you're looking around and marching, you notice some deeper um, imprints in the grass that's kind of um, a little larger than a normal human humanoid foot. Um, why don't you roll me a intelligence check? <clears throat> okay. Uh, would this potentially be related to a goblinoid as a or a human? My two favorite enemies. Yes, it would, sir. Okay. So I'll do this with advantage as well. I'm also, just to kind of set the theme, I'll crouch down and I'll hold up the hand and pause up the troops and then just kind of signal to like keep your eyes open <laughs> good thing I got 14 14 to 1 I'll take that 14 with my advantage for a total of you said intelligence yep that'll just be a 14 I believe oh no what investigation yeah that'll be a 16 I got proficiency investigation perfect so you you do recognize these as hobgoblin footprints you do recognize that they are heading in a general direction, kind of up towards that central top hill that you see sticking above all the others. Um, there's only just a few tracks. It looks like they're walking almost in a circular fashion around these hills, just kind of patrolling them. Um, but the main tracks all seem to head up towards that area. Um, so so they make the rounds and then go back up almost? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to... I'll study these tracks a little bit longer and try and see if I can get a feel for a better guess on the numbers of All them. All right, yep, give me a survival check. Uh, and then I'm also going to gesture for... I'll have Leia and Mac. Um, I'll send them a little bit back. Is there, like, a certain direction they keep going? Like are they It's just in a circular fashion. It's not... It's, it's pretty much just all around the whole hill circle it's not it just goes from like east and then up north back around. um so like are they can i tell if it's clockwise counterclockwise yeah clockwise they're always clockwise mm -hmm. it looks like yep. okay so in that case i want Leanne and mac to go opposite to see if i can backtrack towards to see okay. so we don't have anybody catching up behind us and with my roll another crit yeah i'm on fire i never roll this good critting critting for days and so then, just so i understand you get you're going around like this or yeah, like I'll, I, you're, I you're picture me, Victor, around. and then the other two privates will go a little bit further along following the tracks, and then I want Leia and Mac to just go a little bit okay, further behind right. us just to kind of keep their eyes open All for right. anybody coming. All right, and are you guys approaching this stealthily in any way, or are you guys pretty much just maintaining a normal I march? Th I think we should try and stealth, but um, with what the party has... We'll try. I know I can do a decent job. All right. Um, roll me some stealth checks then. I'll do mine. I'll re 15? Roll. Yeah, 15. Sure. I'll call that 15. All right. I'll roll mine now. 13. 13. All right. And your four people, four privates. Second like 11, a 5, another 11, and a 17. Oh, I do have to check. Does anybody have heavy armor? Uh, yes. The, everyone is wearing, I believe, chain. That's kind of what I picture. Your party, so. So they're all going to have disadvantage. So. Okay, so we're going to have one failure for sure. Yep. Well, one low. I shouldn't say a failure. It's not necessarily a failure. We don't know yet. All right, so they rolled those dice. You you have chain as well? Yes, okay. I will be rolling for my disadvantage as well. 19. We're calling it 19. Okay. So 13 will be my lowest then. All right. All right. So you guys are going to kind of careen around those hills. You'll stay within eyesight of each other. Um, the clanking of just one of your um, members, Private Mac, is just exceptionally loud as he's hitting every twig and every um, rock along the way as he's circling around this path, just making a pretty good amount of noise. Um, as you guys get around this, as you get around the head, um, Private, you, or not Private, sorry, Corporal um, Victor, you will see off in the distance two hobgoblins. 
and you know what the hobgoblins look like, so you're very familiar with what they look like. And they're circling and they're coming around clockwise. It looks like they're heading towards the other people that branched off the other direction right now. And it looks like they're coming to circle around. What would you like to do? Okay. Um, are they still within eyesight of me? Yep, just just barely. They're starting to turn the edge about right about now, so you, you, they're about ready around the edge where you won't be able to see them anymore unless you keep following them. Is there a way for me to contact them or give them a signal without, if they're not even looking at me, like a whistle or a... The hobgoblins? No, or no, men? my oh, men. Okay, oh, absolutely. What do you want to do? Um, I'd like to whistle to them or give some kind of notification in secret that... Yeah, you noticed the hobgoblins yeah. didn't seem to hear your ally, who's being pretty decently loud. So you get you let out a decent whistle as they turn that edge. I'll just pop up from my tracks. I'll see. I hope I see them. I think I have better perception. But, um, and yeah, knowing you'll that, turn and you'll see your men standing there, and he's like looking at you. Okay. And he has a pretty serious look uh, through his visor that you can see. Victor, did you see them? I did. That is why I whistled at our men. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will rush back to make sure Mac and Leia come with us. All right. Uh, yep. You get Mac and Leia, and you guys kind of meet up in, in the center point. Group up. And uh, you guys, you guys are now huddled around each other, and talking amongst yourselves. What was their gear like? Uh, it looked like they were pretty well armed, wearing armor, well equipped with swords, and it looked like they were the real deal. They looked like they were fully equipped, boys. Okay. How many of them were there? Um, just about as, uh, only two that you saw. And it'd be just about as well equipped as any army you've seen, just as well as you guys are. I'm gonna, okay. We're gonna need to do a little pep talk here to get the troops ready. So, <clears throat> men, there is two hobgoblins up ahead. We need to eliminate this threat quickly so they don't give away our presence, nor do they have that strength anymore. So, ready yourselves. They're well equipped. They're strong and they're intelligent. Do not underestimate them. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of them pretty much agree with you. They all fall in line. Um, is there any sort of? Um, I think this time. Anything you want to set up in your time is you have a little bit of time to essentially prepare and um, do what you would like until they come around uh, the bend where you guys are at right now. Oh, they're coming from behind us. Yeah. Okay, I thought they were ahead of us. But that's still, that's fine. It doesn't change what I do. Um, well, yeah, I mean, they're on the other side of the hill, essentially. Coming around. How far away would they be? Uh, probably about 100 feet or so at this point. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stealth. I'm going to... I mean, there's no way to a... know for sure, but from what... Bre- yeah, ballpark. From what, from what the corporal told you about, they're about 100 feet away. Okay, so I'm going to gesture for... I want Victor to take center with two of the privates. And okay. I'm going to have uh, the other two privates go down the hill. And just kind of try and hide off to the side. Okay. Ready themselves with some javelins or something. Get All some right. range attacks. And then I'll take the upper ground, like, towards the hill. Mm-hmm. And I'll stealth up there and come in ready for a flanking charge. All right. Um, so whoever is whoever's stealthing... Roll me stealth checks. I believe that's you, Sergeant, and two of the privates. Yeah, and we could have the others do stealth as well. Um, yeah, they'll try at least. So, I'll have you do one, Victor. Go ahead and lead the charge. All right. It looks, like, it looks like they will get a 12 and a 16. Thank God. As they uh, crouch behind the hill and ready, ready their weapons... At the uh, at the ready, it looks like they are equipped with spears. All right, uh, our guards are. Yeah. Are privates. Yeah. Well, it's your favorite number, number one. Yep. Uh, Classic. So. <laughs> okay, so you guys are not hidden. You're standing well, in the open at the ready. Pretty, pretty much. I mean, luckily that was kind of your order to begin with. I mean, you kind of just waiting for them to come around the corner. Um, what did you get? Sergeant? I am rolling it, sorry. <laughs> Sergeant's not going to do much better. I'm just going to get a 10. 10? Alrighty. Um, so you guys will wait about another five or so minutes. Um, it, it's not long as you guys get set up before you see two of the hobgoblins curve around this area and they pretty much lock eyes with you immediately. 
and they see the person that's standing next to you, which I believe is Private George. Sure, I didn't say which is which. And um, they pretty much lock and they're like, mm, Intruders, what are you doing on our land? Are they speaking in common? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not going to say anything, but I'll just kind of crouch at the ready. They obviously just look and they kind of, they hear you crouch as you crouch, kind of squeak and they look up and they're like, I think it's a fucking ambush. And I need everyone to roll initiative. Damn. That 10 stealth. Hey, there's my better rolls. That's to be a 20 total for my initiative. 20 total? Okay. <laughs> Natural one. Classic. Oh, All right. Man, I got I a two. Sun attack. I got a two with the, the uh, first guy, or George. Nine for Mac. 12 for Harriet and a one oh, another one. for Leia. I'll just say George and Harriet are with me because there was two standing with me in the open and then okay. Leah and Mac were the ones that are hiding. All right. So Leah and Mac will get attacks um, as these hobgoblins approach. They, 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 they were still hidden. So they will throw oh. the javelins right as they say ambush. Okay, so technically would be surprised by them. Yeah. So normally we, we do a modified ambush and surprise kind of thing. Because normally the first round of combat would go. Yeah. We would all be surprised in a yeah. way. And then they would go. But just to make this quicker we're just going to do it. They're going to make their attack and we're going to start initiative. Mm-hmm. So the first attacks with advantage is coming on the hobgoblins. It's going to be a 22 to hit with the first spear that's thrown. That'll hit as the spear will go into his leg, dealing 1d6 points of damage for four damage, four points of damage. The other one will target him as well, and his javelin will just stick into the hill, kind of in front of the hobgoblin. And then we will um, maintain initiative order. Hobgoblins will be going in the ninth position. Um, well, with a nine initiative. Yeah. So they're in the middle of the pack there. So, Sergeant, you will be acting first. Okay. I, Knowing that my ambush has been foiled, I'll run down the hill to take a position up in front of my boys. Um, I want to get a little further forward because I'm going to use a... Uh, I think I will. I'll use a bonus action to do a hunter's mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, just on yeah, the closest they're, target. They're only like 30 feet away from you. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just do that. Um, and then with my action, I will prepare an action to make an attack when they enter my reach. Okay. Alright, so I think after that is going to be... What did you get? One. One? Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, Leia um, will get a go. We'll get a go next. So, um, I'll roll her attack. She pulls out another spear from her back and lunges at... Oop, I rolled with advantage when I wasn't supposed to. He'll lunge at the spear and I got a 19. And um, so 19 will hit with a three. She grabs she grabs her spear with two hands and just s- runs at this hobgoblin and stabs him in the same leg uh, from the previous wound. So since she used two hands, it is a versatile weapon, uh, which means if you use two hands, it does an extra die up of damage. So we went from a D6 to a D8. And she is gonna deliver six points of damage and it was uh, four on that first one. Ten total. So this hobgoblin pretty much just falls on the ground. <sighs> he's breathing heavily as blood is just dripping out of his leg. It looks like she nicked his um, artery in his leg pretty hard. Um, so then now Mac runs out of the same the same hole that he ran, and he's going to make a stab attack on him. That's a ten or a sixteen actually, plus four, another twenty to hit. That's going to hit. He also runs with two and is going right for the throat of this hobgoblin. As he comes in for six plus one points of damage, seven total. As he just nice. runs this hobgoblin through and just... Um, and that will take us to George next. Um, he's going to run up with his spear as well. Try to surround this last hobgoblin now. They're on the, they're on the defensive. The other hobgoblin looks a little worried. Um, at this he point. And he's going to roll 14 plus 
three, a 17 to hit. Let me see if that hits here. I'm not sure if it does. Let's see. So that is going to miss as he, the Hobgoblin manages to just... He's got a shield up. Block it and deflect the attack. So next it's going to go to this uh, Hobgoblin. And he's going to take his sword and raise it against... Um, the one that struck down his friend with a throat shot. I believe that was um, Mac. Mac, no! I should have ran up there! That never must be there. All right. So he's going to make his attack with his long sword. He's going to get 18 natural plus three. That is going to hit... He wields this with one hand. He's going to deal four um, plus one point of damage, so five points of damage total to this guy. He gets a cut across his chest. Nothing too serious yet. Um, he still looks like he's in decent shape. And then it's going to take it to... Um, Our last two with uh, Harriet and... Brevin. Yeah. Or Brett. Sorry, I'm so used to calling you Brevin in the other <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, the other character. Uh, yeah, Victor. Victor. So I'll let you go first, Victor, if you would like. How far, or away, how if, far or away from the... About 30 feet. Right, I'll just run up. Yeah, you just run up. Um, with, what are you using? Two-handed great axe. Two-handed great axe. You pull out your two-handed great axe. You just... Aah! Just charge this hobgoblin as he just readies himself for a, an attack. Oh, their dice are not loving you. Inspiration. Yes. Inspiration. So we use inspiration so that you, after you roll, you can do it. Some mm -hmm. people say you can only do it before the roll. Right. We're a little more forgiving with mm -hmm. this. Uh, and that's going to give Brett advantage. advantage. Yeah, so essentially Sergeant Felix just yells out like, Put some back into it! And you just get a sudden burst of inspiration from Felix. Ah, uh, no! Looks like it is not going to be enough as the... Gob as the hobgoblin just takes the full brunt of your axe and just throws it into the ground using your weight against you as your axe just sinks into the ground. Um, it's going to take it to your ally who now the hobgoblin looks distracted. Unless is there anything else you wanted to do? Can I use my action surge? If you would like to. Or not. It's up to you. Uh, I'll, I'll wait. Okay. You, you decide not to use your, your action surge right away. Um... So next is going to go to Harriet. She's coming at him now with his her spear. 13 plus 3. Not going to do it as he deflects yet another attack. It's going to take us back to the top of the order with a sergeant. Sergeant Felix is going to rush ahead with his halberd and just make an attack. Are you going to get up close or are you going to do that from 10? I'll do. I'll get up close at okay. first range. I'm probably going to, yeah, I'm going to use my inspiration, I guess. All right. Not a good start. You don't want to look like a fool in front of your men. Yeah, so you, I can't. You try to Come you try to stir something up here. <sighs> Two sixes. Yeah, that's, that's gonna miss. Uh, unless a fourteen hits. Fourteen does not hit. Wait, As no, I don't have a plus. This hobgoblin is fending off pretty much everyone right now. It's just a As he's just, just defended so against about four attacks. Um, next, we're going to go to the next two privates. It's going to be Mac and Le Leia. 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 And she's going to attack with her spear again. 13 plus 3. It's not going to do it as he deflects yet another attack. Like I said, these hobgoblins are well equipped. <sighs> it looks like they're um, wearing chainmail and shield, just like some most of you guys are um, in the party. So now that she missed, it's going to go to uh, Mac, who's going to make another attack. That's and he Mac. will land an attack. He's going to plunge his spear right into his side for five points of damage. <laughs> just nicks him as he manages to escape just a little bit, but he gets a nick on him. Um, which will now take us to um, Victor. Oh, no. It, oh, oh, no, yes, the Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. Uh, there should be another private that goes before the Hobgoblin. Two just went. Yeah, there should be three. Three? Oh, yeah, because Harriet was on. Yeah. George still okay. needs to go. Okay, yep. Yep, George. And then Harriet. Or, and then the Hobgoblin. So now George... He'll see. He'll smell blood, and he'll he'll try to get this boy. He will Sixes. be unsuccessful in his attempt, as he he manages to sidestep this spear coming at him, and he's going to counter George. Um, or sorry, the last person he hit was it Leia? Uh, 
Mac. Mac, that's right. It was Mac. Because Mac's the one that killed the other one, too. Yep. He, he's got it out for Mac. And the Hobgoblin will roll a 17 natural plus 320 to hit. Damn. And he is putting his back into this one as he brings his <laughs> long sword into Mac's side. Not you, Goblin! Seven points of damage plus one eight. That's a second hit on Mac. That will drop George. Mac. Or Mac, yes. Mac will fall to the ground and start bleeding out. Mac, no! Um, with my feet for Sentinel, I'm going to use my reaction to make an attack against this guy. Okay, Let's perfect Let's see if I timing. get a hit. Yeah, 16 natural. That's going to hit. Total of 21. 21 hits. And then with a Halberd and Hunter's Mark, I'm going to get an extra D6 with my D10 for damage. He does have five points worth of damage on him already. Let's make sure. Oh, he's dead. Oh, that was a he good did. roll. I got six, seven, so 13 plus my bonus, I believe, of two, three. So three? 16 damage. 16 damage. How do you want to do it? I'm just going to do a good slash across his back. All right. He knocks. He manages to knock one of you down, but you manage to at least uh, be, help, uh, essentially get revenge and and cut his back open as he falls to the ground um, and starts bleeding out. Um, you guys you guys recover from the battle, you clean up your weapons, you um, look around as your as your friend is still bleeding out on the ground. My first action after I kill the guy, I just plant the halberd in the ground, the banner up, and I rush over there and I'm just gonna use a cure wounds. Cure wounds? Yeah, I mean pop a cure on Mac Daddy. Alright. You channel the nature magic around you to try to seal up your guy your troops wounds. Alright, that's okay. We got five hit points back for him. So he'll just suddenly, you'll see his wounds just kind of heal back up and he'll just... <gasps> Thank you, Sergeant. Welcome back, Mac. I thought it was the end for me. Thank you. I couldn't let such a good soldier die. He gets up on his knee. He kind of limps around as he's he's got a good size cut in his wound, but it's sealed up now. Um, he can move around at least. Mm -hmm. But he's he's hanging on with, with 5 HP right now. Mac, you stay in the back. I think I can do that. I think I'm only more trouble and dead weight to you guys at this point. Alright. Um, with this encounter taken care of, uh, Victor, I need you to look through the bodies. Check if they have anything valuable. Yes, sir. Commands, maps, anything like that. Alright. Um, why don't you roll me a perception check as you look through these as you look through these uh, hot goblins? <laughs> how? How? I don't. A natural <laughs> one. Luckily, there's nothing of importance really on them. You do find a rough sketch rolled up and crumpled up of a map in their pocket, and it looks like this map is of these hills. A very rough drawing of these hills, and it looks like there's an X on this spot at that top of that hill where those footprints were essentially leading. Um, what would you like to do with that? Sergeant, it looks like there's a map here. There's an X on the very top of this hill. It looks like that's where their main encampment is. Um, and as, you, as, you, as you're saying that, roll me a survival check because you're just looking on the ground kind of trying to look for some tracks. Tracks? I'm going to use that advantage with tracks. Good thing I had advantage. It's going to be a total of Eve 11. 11. Luckily, it looks like they're not trying to be too stealthy as you find imprints once again of the same hobgoblin footprints that you saw earlier. Um, it looks like they're more heavily concentrated now as they head up more towards this hill okay. as it gets steeper and steeper up. Um, I, I don't think any of my troops are really going to be good enough at stealthing, but I'm going to take up a position that's a little bit further ahead, like 20 feet, 30 feet out. I will take point and stealth, and I just want the rest of them to follow behind me. Kind of a reinforcing situation, but mm -hmm. not as open okay. to being spotted. Right. Um, all right. Um, so if you're if you're leading, um, roll me a stealth check. About how far back are they sitting? We'll say 30 feet. 30 feet. And are you are you staying back with the privates or? Yeah, I'll be with the group of privates, but and we will be following. Okay. Were you guys doing anything with the bodies as well? Are you just leaving them there, or? Oh, was that's a good point. Yeah, do? they're on the patrol route. We should. Uh, I'll have the privates. I'll... There's blood. Uh, there's blood on the in the grass, obviously, and everything. Yeah. But um, um, 
they they are they are just kind of out in the open right now. Victor, cut down a tree. Yes, Sergeant. <laughs> just a small one will do. We'll just use the tree to like spread around the blood and stuff and just make this big dirty blob they won't be able to tell what it is necessarily it'll mm -hmm. probably be able to tell if something happened but I don't think there's anything we can do to actually completely get rid of the blood mm -hmm. and then we can drag the bodies off to the side somewhere roll them down the hill I think that if the hill's steep enough yeah let's just yeah, kick them down it's, okay it's, it's steeper and steeper yeah so. I'll have Victor cut down a tree and have the privates just kick down Kick them down the hill. All right, yeah, you kick them and they just start rolling and just ragdolling down. Just <laughs> uh, do, 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 poof, they hit the bottom. It looks like they land in a pretty deep ravine from where you're at. You don't even see the bodies anymore. They're out of sight. Um, so you guys pretty much just call it good as you turn your attention up and towards that hill now. Okay, uh, with a little tree, just kind of try and cover up the tracks a little bit as much as we can. And then, yeah, you do a little rough job, but it still looks like yeah. there's a mafia scene in here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm basically hoping to make it look like it has more than just two people died. Mm -hmm. um, right. Kind of a blood Kind of a situation. wild animal attack. You yeah, do your best. Yeah. You're very familiar with them. Um, George is being helped by the other privates as he's essentially still a little hobbled, but he's able to kind of walk it off on his own strength eventually as you guys head up the hill. Um, so anyone... Um, uh, you pretty much spend about another hour or so climbing these hills um, before you finally kind of reach this central hill that's very steep and very um, very tall but it's a very sheer uh, steep steepness to it as you guys approach that if you're going up any higher than the base I'll need you to make a stealth check I will step out a little bit so I'll make a stealth check Ooh, that was good. 17. It was 17. almost a 3. The total will be a 19 with my plus 2. 19 plus 2. Alright. Um, you will pretty much just go silent as you kind of just slowly step up this hill. Hold up the hand to stop the troops and just shroud down. Your, your sergeant tells you guys to stop. Um, you tell your, your privates to stop behind you. Uh, Corporal, did you want to do anything? I'll just... Prepare a, a hatchet out. Okay, you, you take a hatchet and kind of clean it. Um, it's it's to this point you you start getting closer and closer at this hill. You can start hearing and smelling uh, a campfire. You can start hearing the sound of grunting, um, snarling, and just overall people just arguing. The sound of wood being chopped can be heard. Swords clinging in the distance can also be heard as you get closer and closer to the crest of this hill. Um, and as you get to that crest of the hill, you peek up over, and over at this hill sits a very, very shallow valley. And in that valley is tents, hundreds of tents, Oof. spread all around with hobgoblins just circling, walking around, doing some archery practice. Um, you even see a few towers that they had built down in there to essentially monitor the area as they kind of sit up a little bit higher, like up almost peeking up over the top, but not quite. So they wanted to sit low enough so they weren't just peeking over, but enough so yeah. they can be close they can to see, see anyone. The crest yeah. these. Yep. So I'm barely on the side of them with my small. As you super just peek stuff. over and you see the site, and you just see essentially one of them just kind of barking orders all around the camp, and as you watch them for however long you really want to watch them. Um... I will spend at least a good five minutes here. I'm gonna try getting a good gauge of like their numbers and how, like I can tell they're well equipped, but is it? Are we talking about like Roman legionnaires equipped kind of situation? Uh, it looks pretty serious. This only looks like a small, a smallish unit, almost an advanced unit, kind of the first uh, from a military standpoint. And your knowledge, this would be essentially the first wave of enemies okay so maybe like you can also you can also see um, barrels with fish in them and a couple a couple nets a couple um, it looks like they hit that fi this is the group that hit that fishing village not happy about that I'll well, see if there's anything else and they're still training it looks like they're still training for something there'll be a company in military terms that's what Right. Um, so Corporal, as this is happening, as he's peeking up, 
Um, you'll just kind of be back with the men looking silently, and I'm going to need you to make a perception check for me quick. What's your passive? I believe... Oh, we're not good. I think Mine's it's like a, a 12 or 11 for you. No, my passive perception's a 14. 14? Oh, dang. Great, great. All right. Um, you'll, you'll be sitting there in silence with your men and women, and you'll be... Um, all of a sudden, you'll see. You'll look up. You'll see your sergeant looking up over there, kind of just looking around. He hasn't really moved much, and suddenly you'll you'll start to hear um, some talking coming around the base of the mountain, uh, counterclockwise towards you. It just sounds like some rough grumbles as you'll just hear. So that's uh, the opposite direction from the patrol. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's going the other way then. So are we where we're at? We're how far away are we from the sar- from uh, sergeant? Yeah, uh, fifty feet. And he's like pretty much like straight up. Mm-hmm. So where 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 is this patrol coming from? Uh, just around just around the bend, just like the other one was. At the same level we're at, or is it's, that... at, it's at a higher level. Okay, almost like he's coming from the edge of the crest mm-hmm. the hill. Yep. Uh, let's say off to our right side. Yep. Yep. And he's coming down. Yeah, walking around the edge of that baseline where you guys are essentially sitting right now. And for the sake of the setting, uh, tall trees, like pine trees all around us, and we're kind of in a thick forest. There's some. There's a few. Yeah, there's a few uh, pine trees situated around around the hills. Okay, and then some more sparse and shrubs and stuff. Yeah, so it's not thick forest. Sparse, no. Okay. It's spread out. It's not dense or anything by any means. Okay, so I'm just sitting there, staring at the troops. You guys can see just the waiting. coast. From up on top of this hill, you can see the whole coast and almost most of the surrounding area too. Okay, it's it's fairly. It's high a good up. sight line. Mm-hmm. But, but it sounds like a fairly large group of uh, of men heading your way. As it's not just one; it's multiple. And as it gets closer, the rambling gets louder. What would you guys? What would you like to do, Corporal? Uh, I'd like what Max one that's injured. Mac, uh, is Mac the one yep. Down. I'd like him to kind of move back, move farther down the hill a okay. little bit, just to give us give some space. And then I'd like um, one of them, uh, Leah, I guess, uh, kind of if she can sneak along the tree line and see if there's any way that she can see how many there are. Okay, Leah is gonna make a stealth check as you give her an order. 18 and a natural one. <laughs> oh no. Well, disadvantage with heavy armor is a pain. So she's going to find a tree line, no problem, as she kind of peeks around the corner. And as she does that, she trips on the stump and falls over ahead. Um, but as she falls down and she looks up, she meets eyes with what appears to be a group of definitely more hobgoblins than you ran into before. Um, from what you can see, there's um, four of them that look almost identical, wielding you know long bows and long sword shield and uh, armor, as well as one of them and one extra one in the middle of them who's kind of standing a little taller. He's more well decorated. He has some skulls and bones um, of of humans on his armor, um, kind of just around him. And he's just kind of pointing around the hills, dis- discussing things, as he just sees this person fall out behind him. And um, pretty much at that exact time, above in these trees are going to fall two other hobgoblins from the trees. And I need everyone to make initiative as they jump down right by you and uh, Vic uh, and the sergeant and the other guys rolling them. So I'll just need everyone to roll initiative. So I'll All wait right. for the. Uh, yeah, I'll let you start off. The hobgoblins. Um, Nineteen. Go ahead and do the guards as a group this time. Okay, we'll just do that for the guards. Nineteen for the guards. Just make it easier. And the hobgoblins. I don't know what that was a nineteen to. Oh god. Hey DM Ty, what do you do now? <laughs> um. So yeah, you guys go. Felix, he's gonna have a twenty-one. All right, let's see if I can get something better than a one this time. Or a two. <laughs> or a four or a six. <laughs> oh, no. Another one. Another one. Um, 
I'm just so inspired by the sheer number of ones you've gotten. You have rolled so many ones in this session. <laughs> Can you my get friend. an inspiration point for uh, that? Um, so the guards will act after the hobgoblins, um, just because of the DM rule and their NPCs and your party. So up first will be you, my friend. Uh, As you turn and now you see two of these hobgoblins. These hobgoblins don't look like any of the other ones you've seen. They uh, they appear in essentially with no weapons or anything. They just seem to be adorned in almost like robes, if you will. Um, and they pretty much like I said, it doesn't look like they really have too many weapons on them, a ranged weapon, and that that's about it. Wait, who? The two that fell out of the tree that you oh, can see okay. right now. Okay. So I prepped an attack with my hatchet. Does that do anything? Well, you prepped your hatchet. I don't know if you'd say you prepped an attack. You grabbed it. You have you have you have your hatchet out and everything. They don't drop next to you or anything, um, but you're you're pretty much ready with a weapon. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, sorry. Because you didn't know they were there, so you can it's all right. attack against them. I'm just trying to do anything I can to get around these ones. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, so, um, so yeah, like I said, you you see the uh, the guys with it doesn't appear that they're wielding any weapons of any sort that fell out of this tree um, as they drop down on both sides of of uh, Victor. How much time has passed since uh, we killed those first guys? Uh, probably about two hours or so. Dang. Okay, so Hunter's Mark is locked up. Um, How far away is Harriet? How far did she get before? Uh, Leia. Harriet? She, no, from Leia. you? Leia was the one allowed. She's oh, probably, sorry, Leia. She, yeah, Leia. She's like, she's 40 feet away or so. So she made it 40 feet before making a noise? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so Felix will pop up, obviously hearing the guard stumble. The only and, two that you guys can see right now are the two that just dropped out of the trees. The other ones have not come around. The side the we, okay, so yeah. Leia can see them. If so, you move, if you move, how far are those? You guys? can hear them now. How far are those guys? They're like fifty feet away. Okay, fifty, 50 feet 60. from the group. So from me, about fifty feet still, just off mm-hmm. to the diagonal. Yeah. Uh, so I will rush towards Leia. Um, okay. And then I'm gonna take my halberd in one hand and actually pull out a javelin and just throw a javelin at one of these guys. All right. At one of the uh, hobgoblins coming. Coming from that group of five? From the tree. The one okay. the close guys. Oh, one of the, okay, it's one of them yeah. that dropped from the tree? Yeah. Uh, and I assume they didn't notice me, so would I get advantage with my stealth? Um, yeah, they did not notice you, so you okay. would have advantage. Two nineteen. Two nineteen. And, and I rolled a nineteen for a It's like you have all the luck for today, and Brett, yeah. has, and Brett has none. Uh, so with a total of twenty-four to hit, I'm guessing that's a hit. That does hit, sir. Four damage. Four damage to him? Yep. All right. The javelin just pretty much as he dodges it, just nicks him a little bit on the arm as they turn and look at you now and they notice you definitely there. Yeah. Uh, so now it's going to go to the hobgoblins. Uh, I'm also going to issue an order to my troops. I'm just like, get out! We're, we're screwed. We're not going to win this battle. Um, it's, it's not going to be long before one of the hobgoblins... Uh, turns with the no weapon that you threw the javelin at. He's just going to run at you. And while he's running at you, um, he's going to throw two darts as he just picks two darts out of his side pocket and just <laughs> as he's running at you. 12 to hit? Nope. Critical. Oh, no. Natural 20 as he lands a dart right in your neck. Parry the first one out of the air and just a second one drills me. This one's gonna do four, uh, seven piercing damage. As he hits you in the neck, you falter a little bit, and he comes in and just swings at you twice for in your midsection with two attacks. Oh, Another critical, critical and uh, twelve to hit. It's a good thing I told you guys to flee. <laughs> so one of those one of those hits is gonna uh, land land hard in your gut as you just feel a resounding shock just go through your internals for s- six damage. Right. The other one is going to run over to you now, who you have your axe out, and he is going to just make um, uh, four attacks he was against you. 50 feet away, right? Mm-hmm. Did you make that? Yep. Just want to make sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So he just sprints through these trees. Yeah, these guys look exceptionally fleet of foot. They look almost assassin esque like. Um, as he comes at you, fucking ninjas, and man. he's going to make four attacks Throw against you, darts. all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 17 to hit. Mm-hmm. Don't 19 use that to hit. Die hit. Don't use that one anymore. That's two crits and a all right. 19 to hit. Six damage. <laughs> one hit just strikes you. Se- second attack, or third attack is going to be a 20 to hit. For another six damage. And then a final attack coming at you. Uh, it's going to be a 13 to hit. Nope. All right. So he lands two punches. <laughs> the ring mail doesn't even seem to help you as it just seems to just shock through your body. Um, your fists feel like steel. And they're exceptionally well-built and athletic hobgoblins. Um, right as they do that, they're pretty much both going to then... Um, focus attention kind of um, elsewhere and they're gonna um, pretty much just be like we got these ones they're not getting anywhere and then so the others the others start coming around the corner now and they're gonna attack Leah and the sergeant and they're about 50 feet away from you so they're gonna double move and get up close to you guys just swarm us and uh, in their turn um, it's gonna go to the other guards right guards yep so they will get to make um, two attacks. Counter attack! Three attacks. As George comes out from the ground and tries to protect his sergeant, he is going to fail miserably. His wound just is, appears too staggering at this point. Mac? Oh, yeah, that's right. He kept saying George, so it threw me off. Mac. So now George will come out, try to save his friends like he's been able to do. And he is not going to be successful as his attack is also deflected. Leia stands up from her trip, gets up, and just thrusts her spear in desperation. Oh, no. Not going to land a hit falling at apart all. right now. Sergeant, it's going to go to your turn. Or, okay. sorry, not Sergeant. Yeah, yeah, we Corporal. still have Corporal Victor here. Um, and what's the current... So, we are about 50 feet out from the group, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're, everyone else is... Um, except for the corporal, essentially. I'm with, around you. Well, the corporal. I'm with three of the three of them, right? Yeah. So three privates and corporal. He's with Leia. Fifty feet back. Yeah, yeah, me yeah. and Leia, fifty feet up from them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the two quick hobgoblins are in the back, fifty feet. Mm-hmm. And we have a group of like ten goblinoids attacking right. us. Oh yes, yeah, so I forgot about the fifth hobgoblin. That's right. He just looks and he says. He pretty much just looks around, assesses the situation from behind all those hobgoblins, and says, Do not let them escape. We can't let them know where we were hiding. Kill them all. Now. And he pretty much um, lets out a little bellowing command, and... Okay, um... And he's going to use his uh, leadership ability, which oh, essentially no. gives, is going to give his troops an additional D4 um, to attack rolls, saving throws. It's like a bless. Within 30 feet of him. He as he just stands there with his them. soldiers, as, or his arms crossed. He doesn't even look like he's going to participate in the battle. It looks like he already has it locked, locked down. Oh, he um, does. It's going to go now to you, to you Corporal. I, mean, I don't even know what to do. I mean, you can't attack him. You can attack them. I mean, we could try and kill these and run, like get the two down in front of you and flee, or you could just turn and run. That, that's basically, I would say, your options at this point. But if I turn and run, I'm going to get attacked. So. Right. There is a disengage action, which is an action that lets you move away without provoking an attack of opportunity. I think your best bet is to just try and cut these guys down and flee. Okay. I mean, because they're I'll so fast, we're not going to escape yeah. from them either. All I have is my hand axe out, so I guess. Um, so I, oh yeah, before I forget Clay, since I can only move 30 feet, I'm 30 feet away from the privates. Leia is the one that's on the ground 20 feet ahead of me. Mm-hmm. She dead. No. <laughs> she, I'm surprised she's still up. The only one who's oh, down is... Oh, because they double moved, right, right. No one is even down yet. Yeah. The only one who got, just hit got was really away. was really him. Because they all double moved to you, to Leia. And then the one shadow monk is up to me. Or one of them, yeah. Monk guy is up to me. Yep. The one with no weapons in the boats. 
And then there's another uh, one of those similar next to Brevin. So I will, I guess, be attacking with my hand axe. That's what I have out on the one that punched me. You can draw a weapon as part of an attack if you want to. It's up to you, but you can just drop the hand axe if you want and draw another weapon. He has it. I would say he would still have his great axe out. No, so I, had, I had my shield out. We had your shield in? That's how that's I got, why that's he how was able 19. to absorb some of the attacks. Fair enough. Yeah, so the way it would work, you could literally just drop your axe, hits the ground, and pull out another weapon if you wanted to. I mean, I mean yeah. Uh, I don't know yeah, if you have another weapon. weapon. I, I have, have, a, have, I have a long sword. Okay, then yeah, you can just do that and yeah. draw your sword. I'll just drop my hand axe that I had prepped and get my long sword out, and okay. I guess attack the guy who attacked me. All right. Eighth one, here we go. <laughs> Don't. Oh, that's a 15. I'm calling that 15? a 15. So, yeah, it'd be. Uh... That one giving out the commands looks more heavily armored uh, than any of the others, too. Yeah. Oh, plus 5. So, yeah, it'd be a 20. 20 is going to hit. Okay. It'd be a D8, D8 for yep. your longsword damage. Ooh, nice. Max damage, 11. 11 damage? Mm-hmm. You'll get a good cut in him, but he's still standing. All right, I'm action surging this guy. That's what's up. You let out a roar that pretty much sends the birds in the valley flying as you lay another attack into this hobgoblin. Um, Roll it up, sir. Oh. (laughs) Do it. 14, Ah, so close to a crit. 19? That's going to hit. You lay another attack on this guy. Seven ten, damage. Ten damage. You're gonna chop down this. You're gonna chop down this. Uh, this guy as he just crumbles down and just <laughs> and coughs up blood. Is there anything else you want to do? Uh, I'll use still... my second wind as my bonus action. Okay. And heal myself. All right. Perfect. Um, you still have a movement action D10 too. D10 plus your fighter one. Plus two. Uh, so eight health back. Yeah, you'll just you'll just grunt and essentially just you'll see your wounds heal up and you'll just brush off the attacks you just suffered from the. Uh... Did any of the privates that were with me get hit, or was it just uh, was it just no. you and the and the? Uh, it was just, it was just you guys. Just, it was just us, you guys yeah. that got hit. All right, so I'm gonna after that I'm going to yell at the privates that are with me. I think Mac was a little bit farther back because I pulled two, and yeah. I said, "Run!" and I'm gonna start taking off. All right, so you you sprint. Um, you're gonna start sprinting down the hill. It's a little hard to keep your balance as you're running down these steep hills, so I will need you to roll an acrobatics check as you run down these hills. Okay. Uh, it's ten. Ten. All right, you manage to keep your balance as you run fast down these hills. Of another thirty feet. Um, you look back at your soldiers, and it's going to go to the top of the order with Sergeant Felix. All right. As, you're, um, as, you're, as you see the corporal start running down, you're faced by one more, and three of your privates are... <sighs> one of your privates is surrounded by four of them. Yeah. With one more just standing in the back with his arms crossed. And he just issued the command to kill you all. Uh, I'm, t- uh, I'm pretty desperate and he to sees, try he and sees save you start, He sees you start heading down the hill, and he's like, after him. I'm desperate to save Leia, so I'm going to go fall offensive. I'm going to Hunter's Mark, this guy in front of me, and I'm just going to attack okay. him. All right, go for it. Nice, 18 natural. You're going to hit. So I do my D10 plus a D6. Decent damage, so it'll be 11 damage to the guy. 11 damage, you puncture him pretty deep. <clears throat> and then I'll position him myself so I'm a little closer to Leia. Just okay. still next so to him. So you're going to move away from him? He's still next to him, but okay. like closer to Leia. Right, right. All right. Anything else? No, so I'll just slide five feet, basically. All right. It's going to go to the, the hobbies. Um, the hobgoblin is going to disengage that was adjacent to you. He's going to give chase uh, so, to Felix. I'm so glad he did this. Thanks to Sentinel, he's still going to provoke an attack of opportunity. All right. Um, so it looks like you're well trained in fighting these guys. Nothing gets past you as he tries to break away, but it seems you're still able to attack. 
No. However, he's just a little <laughs> too quick as your blade re misses him just barely. And he escapes and heads uh, 40 feet just towards nick you. A hair off so he's probably he about 20, 20, 30 feet away from you at this point. He's going to make an acrobatics check. 14, he's going to maintain balance as he's starting to chase you down. He could... Oh, he disengaged. Okay. That's... Yep. That's his, mm -hmm. that, yep. That's his turn. All right. Who's next? Uh, the other hobgoblins, they're going to um, attack I Leia. Just to hit the sentinel so bad. Leia is going to get attacked f at least four times m maximum. So first attack. 17's going to hit on Leia. She's... Felix is going to be so down. It's going to be eight points of damage to Leah. Second attack on Leah. She's critical. Natural 20. As this hobgoblin just takes his long sword and delivers 15, oh no. 16 points of damage. He just cuts her head clean off. And it just rolls down the hill. Um, the other two are going to focus now. And they're going to run and attack... One of them is going to move towards George, and the other one's going to move towards Mac. Harriet. Or Harriet, yes. And they're going to each take an attack. Harriet will be a miss as, as, he blocks, as she blocks the attack. And now the attack against George will also be blocked. Um, that'll end the hobgoblins. The captain unfolds his arms. And says, um, hmm, looks like I might have to get involved in this one. That's a shame. He just draws his longbow, starts walking towards you, kind of similar to Lurtz in Lord of the Rings, as he just walks towards you and draws an arrow and just shoots it directly at the sergeant. <laughs> Are you going to bore him near me? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, hey. So first attack, 11 plus 4, 15 uh, hit. Nope. So the first Barely. arrow, just <laughs> second arrow is going to be a 16 to hit. You're, no. you're already doing better than Bormir. <laughs> if I did not have that you just managed to just fighting style. dodge those attacks barely. Um, you're doing better than Bormir did. <laughs> that'll end the Hobgoblin, so, so it's going to go to um, the men and the women remaining, Harriet, Mac, and George. Um, I'll let you guys roll for their their attacks this turn if you'd like. Actually, yeah, Slay is totally dead. Um, just a plus three to hit. Let's say that they just all oh, gang up on that one that chased after you guys, right? But they're being attacked, right? Yes, they're. George all... got attacked. Oh, that's right. The only one not so, in melee range right now is Mac, and he's at five hit points. I think Mac will throw a javelin and just run down the hill further, just trying to support and run. Okay. Um, throw it at the one that was chasing me. Yeah, and then I think George and Harriet are both going to try and yeah, disengage. Yeah, they're probably best off just trying to disengage and go. Because it'll, then it'll just be a chase for them. Okay, so they're going to disengage? Disengage and run. Alright, so Harriet disengages and George disengages. Um, they're going to move 30 feet, correct, down the hill? That sounds right. Alright, um, roll me an acrobatics check for each one. Harriet. 16. All right, Harriet keeps her feet as she runs down this hill. Are you sure you want me to roll one? I do. <laughs> All right, it's going to be to George. 14. 14, he manages to keep his feet no problem as he runs down the hill now, trying to escape this hobgoblin party. Uh, Mac readies a javelin to throw out the, uh, the one giving pursuit to you. Oh, that's going to probably miss. Just, just a plus nine. three to hit. Nine. That's a 12. 12, you just see the monk pretty much just turn around and just dodge it and just keeps running, um, which will now take us to the uh, corporal. Uh, how close is... Uh... Probably 20 feet out from him, the, the monk one. Yeah. Yep, the quick one is about 20 feet or so out of him. I think if it's worth it to turn around and engage this guy to help my privates get away. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn around, uh, see my privates like, like you know, passing each other basically, and I'm gonna come back and uh, 
uh, attack the one that's escaping or that's chasing me. All right. uh, and I got shield bomb sword, so. All right. So you you pretty much just churn up the hill, and uh, you just turn this guy as he just runs pretty much into you, and you run into him, and you just take your what is it great axe you said? No, I guess He's I got the shield. shield, the shield. So you just brace him with a shield and just going for a stab on him. Uh, it'll be uh, sixteen to hit. That's gonna hit. Yeah. So you plunge your long sword into him. Uh, eight damage. Eight damage. All right, he's still gonna be standing, but um, he's not. He's not looking too good at this point. Uh, that should be my turn. All righty. It's gonna go back to the top of the order then with you, Sergeant. So the one that disengaged from me is currently over by Victor. How far away is he? He's fifty feet. Mm-hmm. About another thirty now, so about eighty from you. Oh, he got. He only moved one time away. Who, Victor? No, not Victor. Yeah, him. So yeah. he's 50. I thought you were talking about Victor. And Victor so. ran up to him, so yeah. he's, he's in yeah. Um There's those other two. Uh, I'm going to go the ones that attack George and Harriet. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to try and position myself more down the hill from them, and then 10 feet away, and then just make an attack. Okay. Yeah, you, you kind of place yourself down on the hill, brace yourself, and stab up at them. Yeah, don't get to use my hunter's mark since it's still in that monk one that's not dead. Um, but I'll just make one attack on the f- closest one. That'll be a 15 natural, total of 20 to hit. Yep. Do my d10 damage. It's going to be 7 damage. 7 damage. And then with horde breaker, I'm, if they're adjacent to each other, I'm yep, going to attack. Okay, so I'll attack the next one. 18 natural. Hit. For minimum damage. Right. You'll cut into them, but they'll both be standing. The first one you hit, he's he's looking in pretty bad shape. Um, it's going to go to the hobgoblins. Two attacks coming at you from the ones that you just attacked as they cut you with a long sword. Swing my hobbit around and try and block it. 19 natural on one of them. The other one you will manage to, bl- to block. Um, this attack will deliver a grand total of two <laughs> points of damage. All right. Um... Then the other one, the other two that cut down Leah will turn and they will give pursuit to the other two running away. Did Mac move at all? Yeah, he threw okay. and moved. Okay, so he's further he's he's furthest ahead of anyone right yeah, now. Yeah, he's the furthest ahead. So they'll move thirty feet kind of down the hill, give pursuit, and they'll both pull pretty much just pull longbows out at this point and sheath their long swords and that's gonna be their turn. Do they need to be rolling acrobatics? Yep, they got to roll acrobatics. Yeah, here we go. One of them trips. Ten. One of them trips and rolls down the hill. He's going to take three points of damage. He does roll down the hill an additional 30 feet and stops. And he hits that, hits the ground, but he's 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 prone. It's pretty much next to the privates now. Yep. On the ground. Yep. <laughs> um, so now it's going to go to the Capitone. Who's going to just keep walking forward, and he's going to pump another two shots. Actually, he's just going to—he's just going to sling his—he's um, just going to sling his uh, bow on his uh, chest, and he's going to move into uh, Jason to you, and then he's going to pull out a giant greatsword, and he's going to get ready to stand mano in mano with you, mm. as that'll end his turn, and it'll go to the corporal, or to the uh, to the privates. Okay, so. Uh, oh, the shadow, the shadow monk. I forgot about him too. Yeah. He is going to probably just strike the corporal that he's facing. Yeah, um, he's going to make uh, four attacks against the corporal. A flurious blow. Eighteen natural. Uh, Critical. Right, that's two hits. So let's do the eighteen natural first, which is a. Six damage. Uh, crit is going to be four seven damage. Third attack is a seventeen to hit. Nope. That shield. And then another seventeen as you block the last two blows. And then he is going to end his turn. Um, so now that'll go to the private side. Okay, privates are gonna gang up on that guy on the ground. 
uh, just poke poke two attacks. Okay. You want to roll? I'll have advantage since he's prone. I'll let you roll first. Nice. I see a fifteen. Uh, so twenty probably. I don't know what the attack would be. But but I think they only got fifteen natural. Yep. D eight plus one. Two handed spear. Max nice. damage nine. Nine three. Yep. He'll just put him out right there. And then move. Yep, and then he'll move 30 down, and then just roll an acrobatics check to keep your foot. 13. 13. Um, Mac will keep running. Uh, does he have any javelins left? I think he's thrown two. Uh, he has, yeah, he'll have two more left. Okay. Uh, we'll lob a throw at Captain. Uh, one of the weaker hobgoblins on the side. Okay. Nice. Even with disadvantage, it's going to be a 17 to hit. If it's a plus 4. On the hobgoblin? Yeah. Not the captain. Not, not the, the monk. Um, Monk's dead. Yeah, he just blocks away the arrow. Oh, I thought you killed him. He blocks away the arrow. He's the guy in the back. He blocks it with a 17? Dang. Using a shield, too? Mm-hmm. God. Okay. Then Mac will run, and I'll make that. Acrobatics. Mac. <laughs> Mac might get consumed. Mac is going to just trip... And fall face first into the ground. Natural one. Oof, as he takes three points of damage and rolls down the hill thirty feet. <laughs> he's, what about? Um, he's got two hit points left. So we had Jordan Harriet. What about George? Well, one up. Either George or Harriet attack the one on the ground and killed it. Yeah, pretty much Mac right now is. Um, yeah, let's say Harriet got the kill. Mac did run and throw. George will probably. Yeah, Mac's run and pretty throw. much laying right at his feet right now. I'll just do a throw at the, uh, I guess the monk. So, sound good. Well, so how many hog, hobgoblins are left? Not the monk and not the captain. Of the one, hobgoblin. one monk, the captain hobgoblin, and then three, two regular, three regulars. Three regulars. Oh, because one of them chased after you guys too. So there's currently two regular by me and the captain. One regular and the monk chasing after the group. Yep, I would throw it at the, I would throw it at the one, normal hobgoblin, Go ahead. and I will I'll take them, do the and I'll try and do, hit the monk. Make that roll. Good effort. Another do one. They, does the card get an inspiration? <laughs> no, sir. His 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 essentially goes to pull the javelin and it just snaps. It was a faulty javelin. <laughs> the head falls off. Yep. Natural okay. one. I guess I'll keep running then. All right. Oh wait. Yeah, chromatics. Hey. Makes it good. All right. Um, so after the privates, it goes to you, Corporal. Alright, I'm going to uh, just keep attacking this guy in front of me. Alright. Finish him, Corporal, and get out of here! Mm, 15 to hit on that's the gonna, monk. That's gonna hit. Because yeah, I attacked one of those hobgobs yeah, with a shield. I know. I, that's what made me think I might be able to do it because of the. Another max damage. Mm. Yeah, you'll cut, you'll cut him down. You just cut his head clean off like Leia's was cut <laughs> off as it rolls down the hill. Um, anything else? I'll just yell at run. the privates. Keep running! All and right. then I'll run, keep running 30 more feet. <laughs> and then I tumble. <laughs> you're gonna, Another you're gonna fall. Stop rolling that you're d20. Take three, put it in jail. Three Get points of damage here. as you fall down the hill. Um, um, is that is that everything then? And you'll be prone. Uh, just so you know, so standing up will cost extra movement on your next turn. Okay. Um, if we go slower, does that like not trigger the acrobatics if we choose to? Um, if you like, uh, is there a way to get around the acrobatics? You check? can move. You can move slowly in like half your movement. Okay, just to make sure. Mm-hmm. So Mac might die. <laughs> He's got two hit points. Um, I only healed him five. I have four. Yeah. So. Um, Whose turn is it? I'm sorry. It's up to you, Sergeant. Okay, I'm going to turn and try and cut down these puntos. The little guy that I looked the weakest, I'm going to strike for him first. I'm going to miss him. He blocks your attack. Yeah, that's a 12 to hit. And they laugh. <laughs> I'm going to lash out at the Weak next one. human. Oh, I guess I'm going to use my bonus action to bring Hunter's Mark to the second one that I'm attacking. Okay. Mm. 14 to hit. No. Just desperately <laughs> swinging my halberd around. 
And I just cannot connect. And I just keep yelling to Victor, keep running! All right, it's go! going to go to the... Warn the captain! It's going to go to the Hobgoblins now. And we are going to start out with Big Boy in front of you. Um, Felix Kulvarik was staring down the Hobgoblin captain. He is going to make two attacks at you with his great sword. Oh no. Oh no. Can so I see... see? Felix, or am I too far away to see Felix anymore? Yep, you can see him. You just he's, I'm still he's, on side. Yeah, he's he's probably like sixty or so feet away from you at this point, maybe more. Yeah, I think it only um, got sixty feet. Well, I ran sixty feet, and then you fell and thirty. Then I fell, no so way, I ran thirty, turned around, fought, tried to run thirty, tumbled. So I'm still probably sixty feet. I just tumbled sixty. The the next the other thirty. So I'm sixty feet. Yeah, I'm sixty-ish. You're in view. Yeah. You can see. Yes, sir. All right, so let's get on with this hobgoblin attack here. Um, and since he has an ally adjacent to him, he is going to have a martial advantage on you this time. So his first attack is going to miss. Second attack. Oh, it's so lucky. Holy cow. 13? Nope. Just nope. push it away with my halberd. All right. Okay. So now he's gonna miss, and he's gonna just be like, "No, leave this one to you, men." And he's just gonna pretty much move a little bit closer, starting down the hill. He's not gonna move past you or anything like that, but he'll still be adjacent to you. But the other two are gonna attack you now. That's gonna be a fifteen hit. Nope. My scale mail or protect me from that one. And then an eighteen natural plus oh, three yeah, twenty. That's definitely gonna hit. He'll slip past the chinks in my armor. For four, uh, five points of damage. We'll draw some blood with that one. Nice. <sighs> um, the other one, giving pursuit, is going to get up and he is going to go down. Or he's draw. He drew his arrow, so yeah. he's he's going to take a shot now at um, Mac. Do the trees provide any sort of cover? He's, he misses. He just freaking whiffs hard <laughs> on that one. Just one. Tsk. We got a lot of ones. It just hit rolls down the hill. Way off, far shot. Um, so that's going to end there. So it's going to go to the privates. You guys can pretty much act for them. I think a couple of javelins back at the closest guy and then keep running. With with George. George, George and Harriet are both close okay. enough. Um, yep. Harriet fell down, so she'll have to stand and then throw. Okay. And then she could just move 15 feet. I'll do her. Uh, would that be a lob? Probably. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one. So wait, there's because there were two next to the captain, right? To the sergeant? Two, two next to me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And the captain, who the captain yep. just took a one step. Yep, and then there was one already down the hill. Okay. Yeah. They're throwing the one down. He's prone. No, he didn't move anymore. Did no. Okay. But that'll be a miss. I got an 11 and a 1 with disadvantage, so I'm going to take that 1. So Harriet will fail. She's just going to move half, get up and move half her speed. So. Alright. Sounds need, good. Need another acrobatics check with that? Or... Mm hmm. You guys are starting to level out now, so you'll probably won't have to make them anymore. Nice. She got an 11. 11. She'll be good. Alright, so it's going to be. Do you want to do George? I'll do George. George. He's didn't fall, correct? He did not. Nope. I'll he'll throw a javelin at the the one that's already down the hill. The one that the wasn't the goblin yeah. that's chasing. Yeah. Uh, it'll be uh, seventeen natural. Seventeen natural. Yep, you're gonna hit. It's gonna Wait. be a D six for the javelin. Would it be a lob or would it be a? That'd probably be a lob. Yeah, it's a lob. Sorry. Hey, no, 17. 17. D6. Plus one. Max. Jeez, you a lot of max damage. Seven you points. Once, seven. Damage. Plunges and just sticks into his side, and he just... <laughs> won't let them get away. And then, yeah, George will move 15 feet as well. Okay. If I didn't use an acrobatics, that's fine. 12. 12? That'll be good. It's going to go to you, Corporal. Oh, no, Max still hasn't Oh, yeah, Mac, yeah. He's on the ground. I think he's he'll, next to that. He'll stand up. Is he? 
I'm pretty sure. I thought he was farther down the hill than anybody. No, he, he's no, the yeah, that's right. Yep. I'll have him, he'll just stand up, and I think at this point he's just so beaten and tired, he's just going to go slow and steady for a bit. Okay. He's got two hit points, so he's limping along. All right. All right, that's going to end their turn. It's going to go to you, Corporal. I'm going to run over to the one, whatever, like along the hill, mm -hmm. um, to the one that just got hit with that javelin, javelin. and longsword attack him. Okay. How far away am I? Am I close? Yeah, you're close enough okay. to get up to him. Well, yeah. I mean, I, well, I just want to know how close I am because in case I'm, I want to know how farther I can run down the hill. Uh, you probably won't be able to move any further down the hill because okay. you're going up towards it. Okay. Don't. Oh, oh yeah. Good, good call. <laughs> there, there you we go. go. 17 natural. Yeah, you'll hit. Okay. <laughs> that D20 is cursed. With your long sword, you just run up at him and just run him into the long sword. Uh, five damage. Five damage. Yep, that'll put him down as he crumbles to the ground and falls down the hill. Two remain, and the captain. Noise. Is the captain pretty much just gets infuriated at this point and just? I'm just gonna like. Also, before I end my turn, I'm going to like just. Yeah. I mean, I can't get you know. Prep, you know I'll just face him. Like get okay. my shield up. Yeah, shield right. up. You put your shield up, and next it's gonna go to the hobgoblins. Um, Weren't you last? Yeah. So it goes. Oh, to sorry. This. Yeah, you, okay. sergeant. Um, I want to do one more desperate attack. I'm going to attack the one that has the Hunter's Mark first. Mm -hmm. Critical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so 2d6 plus 2d10 to damage. Not very good rolls, though. A 3 and a 3 on my d10s. 8, 12, 15 damage. Yeah, you'll cut his, cut his head clean off. And then uh, with Horde Breaker, I'll attack the other one that's adjacent. That'll be a 20 to hit. Yep. And that'll be another 8 damage. Okay. He's still up. Uh, um, bonus action. I'm just going to put Hunter's Mark on. I should put it on him, but I'll put it on the captain now. Okay. All right. All right, you do that. It's going to go to the Hobgoblin's turns. The captain's going to see his men falling, and he's going to whistle, and he's just going to pretty much be like, Get over here, boys! Calling some more and all trees. of a sudden, more of those um, unarmed ones are going to drop from the trees, two more of them, and a couple more Hobgoblins are going to come from that same path from earlier that they came up from. They're not going to be any close to you or anything like that, but they'll, they'll definitely... Be running towards us. Be running towards you. And then the captain's going to just look at you and just be like, You've given us enough fucking trouble. I'm going to cut you down where you stand and let you see your corporal. I'll spit on the ground and then uh, with my goblinoid language, I will just sell it, tell him, I'd like to see you try. This brings his act or his greatsword back and swings. 13 plus 4, 17 to hit. Ugh, right on the money. Right on the money. This is Marshall advantage. Let's see how much he's gonna do. He might drop me. <laughs> Bold words for a man who's about to Did drop. All the ones that just drop, are they facing? Like, are they coming to, towards you, or are they coming after us down the hill? Probably towards. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm ahead of you. Got like I'm up the hill from you. Ooh. Twelve. Five d six. Plus four. Yeah, I'm down. 16, 20 damage. I'm down. All right, and he just pretty much just knocks you over the head, just with like the blunt end of his blade as you just go black and just fall to the ground. Um, and then he's going to pretty much just walk walk towards Brevin. Um, well, sorry, Brett. <laughs> Corporal. walk towards me? I'm like... Yeah, after he drops me, he's going to turn to Yeah, he's going to he's gonna start, he's gonna start moving towards you um, for the rest of his to turn. You, just towards you. And then he'll uh, he'll probably sheath sheath his great great sword, and then he'll just start walking towards you. Um, it's going to go to the other one, and he's going to pull his his longbow out and move uh, thirty feet towards with the next with his captain. The other ones are going to all just kind of move and start descending down this hill at you, at you guys. Um, one of the hobgob or two of the hobgoblins do stay back that were coming up, and 
uh, pretty much are watching over uh, the sergeant at this point. Um, and they start they start tying him up as the other uh, monks start running and proceeding towards you guys down the hill. Um, they'll roll their checks here. And they both keep their balance as they run down that hill. Um, it's going to go to the privates. They're just going to full on run, I think, at this point. Okay. Have we reached the part where it's no more longer ac- acrobatics? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, then yeah. They're just, they're just Commit gonna dub- to They're just double move in 60 feet. Yep. So, Mac, George, Harriet will all just sprint. Okay. All right. I agree. <laughs> all right, so they all sprint um, 60 feet. Yeah. All right. They sprint 60 feet, and it's going to go to the um, corporal next. Just for my thought, I'm unconscious, so I can't. Yeah. I was going to do my last words. Go! <laughs> but. Or I, already, I already know. Um, yeah, I guess I'll... Am I, I think I'm still in the part where that needs to act about it, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah, you are. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. I just got to... You know. Yeah, I mean, I gotta go. There's nothing else you can yeah. do. So, um, yeah. I don't have to disengage or anything, right? I'm nope. fighting no one's right adjacent right. to you. Alright, so yeah, I just... Don't fail us. Yeah, another right. 17. And then I'll just double move. Alright, so you'll move 60 feet. Perfect. Alright, so that's gonna go to the sergeant then. Um, death save? Mm, you're just unconscious, so you don't need to make his death save. You're just at zero. You're not bleeding out or anything, so you're gold. Um, what if I want to wake up and <laughs> get a critical? Um, it's okay. So that's that's your turn. It's going to go to the hobgoblins uh, next. So these these two that are unarmed suddenly are going to just get engulfed in shadows <laughs> as they just suddenly appear thirty feet down the hill, just <laughs> suddenly, and then they're going to both dash. 80 feet after that. So they've just moved 100 and, 110 feet. I think they got to make at least one check. Yeah, they'll make one. They'll probably, they are pretty good at acrobatics. 7 plus 4, yeah. And uh, 15 plus 4, we're good. As they get to that flat land now, and they just pretty much start reaching for darts and chasing you down. And then the hobgoblin captain just walks pretty much 30 feet and he just takes out his bow like he had lines up a shot and he's going to take a shot at, at Mac with sharpshooter sharpshooter oh, I was going to say I thought I was going to get Boromir here <laughs> oh no 17 minus 5 12 so 17 to hit And he... Yeah, I'm sure that'll hit. He's a good dex. Yep, that'll hit. Max is dead. And Max will just get... As you just see an arrow just pierce through his throat and he'll just... Fall to the ground and bleed out. As he starts bleeding out of his neck. Um, The Hobgoblin then draws another arrow. This one's for you. And he just etches another shot. (laughs) Oh, no! Natural 20. As this one just goes into Harriet's back, right through her chest, and she falls down dead. I suppose I'll roll damage, but I'm guessing she's dead. Yeah, she was wounded before, I think. I don't think Harriet yeah, or George also, are hurt, though. Yeah, I mean, it's a sharpshooter, so it's already 10 damage plus his modifier. Yeah, I think they only have like 10 hit points, so. I think they have 12, but with the modifier. Harriet falls, it's now. George, Victor, remaining. Oh. Yeah, just keep keep running as fast as we can. Uh, so that's going to take it to George next. And he's pretty much just like, what are we supposed to do, Corporal? As he just runs in a panic towards you. The sergeant told us to keep running, so we will keep running. We have to get back to the captain. He's just pretty much like, you're right. You're right, as he starts breathing pretty heavily. And at this point, um, just roll me a constitution check as he looks like he's getting tired. Uh, 
18, 18. natural. He catches his breath and he just kind of keeps running and manages to keep running with no issues. Um, you guys are at the flat flat part now as you guys are getting even closer and closer um, out of this hilly region. Um, so that'll take it to you. I keep running as well. I mean, we, okay. we one of us has to get back to the captain. Okay. All right. So you just take off running, dashing. Um, it's going to go to the mm, hobgoblins next. And they are going to once again magically cover themselves in uh, shadows and teleport 30 feet forward. <laughs> um, and then they're going to move another 110 feet and they're pretty much right next or another 80 feet after that. So they they're more, pretty much right next to you guys at this point. One more check before they got to the flat part. Mm -hmm. Well, they teleported past it and then went. Um, so that's going to end their turn. So it's going to go to the Hobgoblin Captain, who just turns and starts walking back towards um, the sergeant at this point. Um, and he says, <laughs> They won't last long with these assassins on their heels. And he just turns and starts walking back up the hill towards him. And you you turn around long enough to see your friend pretty much get picked up by the Hobgoblin Captain and thrown over his shoulder. And the other two Hobgoblins kind of just take up a defensive position and start just patrolling, looking for anyone else in the area. Um, so that's going to take it to uh, George. I mean, I'm sure he's in front of me. I just tell him to keep running. George, keep running! Because he just pretty much runs, runs, runs. Um, I wish I could give him some kind of inspiration, but... And it's going to go to you, then. Faster. It's going to go to you. You could split up, or you could hold the ground. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're already right next to me anyway, so if I move, they'll provoke an attack, won't I? Unless I disengage. You can disengage. They're, they're not right, they're close to you, but they're not right next to you by any means. And it's two of them? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, yeah. There's shrubs, there's, there's some bushes, there's some trees definitely around. So you could you could run and try and hide, like use the cover to make them lose sight. You could run in a different direction to split up with George. So they have to try and track you both. You could just hold up and try and give George as much time as possible. Uh, curse of D D. It's so open ended. You do whatever you want to do, basically. Can I divert and then also try to hide? Yeah. I'm gonna try and do that. You're, you're gonna dash, or are you just? So I'm going to. to... Hiding is an action. So to hide, you'll have to use your action. So I just yeah, just normal speed, 30, 30 feet, and then yeah, I'll try to hide. Check. Okay. Stealth, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen and a twenty with disadvantage. Do you have dex? I think you have a plus one dex, don't you? Maybe not. Um, no, it's zero. 20 so and 18 on those dice. So you're pretty much just running, running, running. All of a sudden, you'll just essentially fall down. And you fall through this little hole in the in the area. And as, you, as you're running, you divert. And one of them follows you, the other one follows George. And you're pretty much just running, and all of a sudden you just drop. You're only going to take... Or roll me a roll me a dexterity check as you kind of saving throw. Yeah, saving throw, dexterity saving throw as you hit the ground to try to absorb some of the damage. Sixteen natural. Sixteen natural. Okay. Yeah, you find you roll, you stand up, you see this like essentially burrowed tunnel underneath this hill in a little hollow pocket. It looks like some sort of cave or something or something of that matter that's built into this hill. Um, that's gonna end your turn. Unless you wanted to do anything else. Yeah, because he had moved in action, yeah. Okay, perfect. So it's going to go to George, who just keeps running. Uh, and then it's going to go to the Hobgoblins. I'm so sorry, George. Uh, he's going he's gonna to move go. to George, and he's going to throw four darts at George. George! He's only going to hit him with one. 
I guess at this point... I don't think George is taking any damage either. It's going to be for uh, seven points of damage to George. Maybe George should just turn to the tech. The other one's going to just like... You're going to hear him. You're going to hear him just... You're going to see some shadows just kind of shimmering above as you see like thick grass covering um, the hole that you fell down in as you just go quiet and just look up and you're going to see him kind of just walk around looking for you. Close, but I don't think that's enough. And he looks like he just pretty much walks a couple spaces. You hear him step around, see some dirt kind of fall down from above as he just says, Where the fuck did he go? He was in my grasp. <laughs> well, there's still another one. As he just takes off towards George and he's going to unleash four darts at George now. Hmm. It might be disadvantage. He's a little further out. Yeah. He'll have disadvantage. Oh, George the jungle. That's a D12. <laughs> Miss. No, you rolled it. You rolled it, okay? <laughs> Miss. Hit. Oh, no, George. And a miss. All right, yeah. I'm sorry, Georgie. For seven points, so that'll... As George will fall down. <laughs> Start Wasn't bleeding serpentining, out. at least? Serpentine! Serpentine! Um, you know, kind of what, like, um, the youngest Stark should have done. <laughs> so, he will fall down, bleeding out like the rest of his fallen comrades, as it'll go to you. Alone in this little fox den. So is it like a tunnel cave system? Or is it just like a hole? Yeah, yeah there's a hole with a little cave system, it looks like. You can't see much, as there's no light or anything there. The only provided light is the light coming down right now. So it's just about 20 feet light around you and then another 20 dim light. But you can do see I stay and wait it out or do I try to go through? This is Victor's choice. Yeah. What would Victor do? I mean, he'd do anything at any cost to get back. You, just, you pretty much just start pondering what you should do. Roll me an intelligence check with advantage. Oh, well, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> You're a lucky boy. You can do it. Advantage. With advantage, you said? Yeah. Oh, so 15. Fif- 15? Yeah, I got a 16. I got yep. a negative one. Yeah, that's fine. Suddenly you'll remember no. something your sergeant said. He remem- You remember him telling you about little tunnels underneath these hills that were built a long time ago by creatures and that most of them lead back towards a steel door, but they don't go all the way. I mean, yeah, if I recollect that, then I will start moving, feeling my way through. Let me check, make sure what equipment I have to see if I have any, like, you should. You definitely have. You definitely have a torch on you. Yeah, I do have a torch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I'll, you light up the torch. Well, can I get away from the hole first? Oh, absolutely. And then once I'm away from the I hole. I figured it was yeah. daylight, so yeah. it's pretty hard to see a torch. Here. Yeah. And so you then, pretty much light a torch up and start heading down through that tunnel. So oh, I'm slow moving, so I yeah. don't generate noise. That, that'll pretty much end the encounter there. Um, as you head through this this very, very small tunnel, you have to crouch almost to kind of crawl through with this torch as you get smaller and smaller. It looks like some sort of small creature made these. You don't know which which kind or anything like that, but you're, you're thanking the gods for your luck right now as you fell into this hole and found this little den. And you're crawling back, and it's not long probably about an hour or two walking through these tunnels slowly and crawling your way through them that you'll finally see light similar to the one, the one you saw earlier. It's a lot more shallow though. It's not as deep of a drop as, as the last one. Um, you'll be able to potentially get out. You just got to make the right checks essentially to get out of the, out of the hole. Can I do a perception check first to see if Absolutely. the area is safe? Yep. Okay. Do some listening here if there's anybody out there. Uh... Well, I mean, my passive's 14. Yeah, you got a better passive than I do, man. Yeah. I mean... It's 14, because you rolled a 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it would be 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So your passive perception, you don't hear you don't hear anything. You don't smell anything. You can just hear the crackling of your torch and the tar coming off of, off of it as a smell. As you kind of just poke your head around and look, you don't see anything really immediately around you. Time of day. It's, it's starting to... Um, come down the sun as as the nighttime is setting in at this point but you're probably 
judging by the general location, you're probably about, you would assume, maybe a half day's travel out from the steel door. From, or not from a steel from the door, from, from Fort Stalwart, sorry. Okay. You were very far away from the steel yeah. door. Yeah. Um, and you said it's like dusk? I don't know. Yep. Right now. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so I gotta, still got to climb up. So, yep, so uh, just give me an athletics, athletics. check. Yep. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, you pull yourself out with no problem. <laughs> Crawl out on the other side. You can even see um, Stalwart from here um, in the distance. You just got to get there. It's pretty flat land from this part. It's not as hilly from the area that you were in. Um, off so, to the northeast. Off to the northeast there. Peeking um, through the pines. I like you put out my torch and... Uh, I guess start running. Start running? Yeah. All right, you're gonna, you're gonna run essentially through through the night a little bit. Um, give me a Constitution check to stave off your exhaustion as you start to get very tired and weak. Does he have an inspiration point? <laughs> yeah, he has an inspiration point from remembering his captain's uh, tip. Nice. That's way better. That's better. Um, <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. All right. Yeah, you'll pretty much successfully catch your breath. You're not going to be like, too yeah. affected by your stamina. Oh, saving throw. As so you, as yeah, you yeah. stumble stumble up to the stall, uh, Fort Stalwart gates, and there you, you're welcomed by the normal party sitting there watching over the town at, or over the fort at night. And they're like, let him in! It's one of our own! It's Corporal Victor! Let him in! Let him in! <laughs> they start cranking the doors. The wooden doors open as you fall in covered in blood wounds everyone's just like Where, where's the rest of everyone Where, where's the men and all of a sudden they're saying that and you're just catching your breath trying to breathe and just answer all these questions Arthur Harrowleaf will come up through the crowd pushing his way through everyone and he says god damn it man what the hell happened out there Why? Are, where's everyone where's your sergeant where's your privates the sergeant's been captured and all the privates are dead I was the only one to make it back alive. Barely. It's very troubling to hear. What, what did you run into? Did you find them? We found a party. What is beyond that party? I don't know. But there was a massive captain that and his troops, monks, assassins, took us all out. Where did you find them? The tallest hill in the that we found. You said they took the sergeant? Yep, they captured What about alive. the other privates? Were they ca- were they taken alive? Massacred. I'll inf- have to inform their families. Well, Brevin. Sorry, well, Victor. <laughs> yeah. I always call you Brevin. Well, Victor. I appreciate your valiant effort. I do have one task to ask you. I need you to go up to the top, highest point here the watchtower and light the signal flare to let the other watch points know that we're under attack and that we need reinforcements at the front right away. I can do that. He just hands you a torch that he was holding and he just says with speed sir. And you just run up the stairs up the tower (laughs) run up. There's a giant stack of hay similar to like in Lord of the Rings in a brazier. You just stick the torch in there and light it up lights up and then off in the distance you see another one just start lighting up I liked it I liked it for once I see that first one light up just collapse you just fall on the ground and just lean against the brazier and just breathe heavily and exhale and that is where we will end this game gentlemen Um, so yeah thank you guys for staying it ran a little bit longer than we wanted to but not a problem there um I just wanted to go out and sh- say uh, thanks for listening. Um, we are Tavern Legends again. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook. Twitter account is at Tavern Legends. And our Facebook is just Tavern Legends, the page. You can also go to podbean.com and listen to our other podcasts from our Table Talk episodes 1 through 4. And we will soon be putting this episode, uh, Legendary Tales Episode 1, up for you guys to listen to as well. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, next time, we haven't really figured out what we want to do yet. Uh, so if you guys have ideas, let us know. 
Uh, we want to thank Brett for joining us today. It was great to have another person on the podcast. Always. Thanks for having me, guys. I had fun. Yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the session. I can still surprise you a little bit. Yeah, it was great. I had a good time. Uh, um, but yeah, hopefully you guys all enjoyed the story of listening. So Yeah, thanks for joining us, travelers. We wish you safe travels and legendary trails. Tales. Legendary tales. Sorry, this is what happens after you play d and You get a little, a little fried. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.